Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I want you to listen to this from Peter St. Onge. I'm assuming he's from Canada, maybe he's French or something. But listen to what he says about the bank stress tests and how it reveals red flags. The Fed just announced the results of its annual bank stress tests. One might compare it to passing an exam you wrote yourself, but even with the friend treatment, there were a number of red flags. These annual stress tests were mandated after the 2008 crisis showed the Fed's spectacular failure to keep Wall Street from going bust and using it as a bailout piggy bank. The stress tests model, quote, adverse economic scenarios like recessions and play out whether the banks would go bust. If the banks pass, the Fed usually lets them reduce their capital cushion, which banks love to do so they can hand billions to shareholders and leave taxpayers with the bailouts. Now, it's worth noting that all the major banks also passed stress tests last year, and yet we've already had three big regionals go under before the recession even hits in full. So passing the stress test does not mean banks are safe. Indeed, one critic savaged the tests as, quote, dangerous, misleading, incomplete, and resulting in false comfort. Even so, the Fed reported big red flags, especially in commercial real estate and credit cards. In fact, big enough to see. I think you've heard enough. The point is, is that it's all a bunch of bull. And that's the reason that myself, I do things like having a Glenn account, which is not a bank account. It's its own account where I own gold. I've got a referral code. If you're a new customer, you can use this referral code, get 50% off vaulting and insurance fees for the next 12 months. You'll get a MasterCard debit card where you can actually spend your gold. This is a way, it's like an insurance policy against the banking system is the way I see it. I also have physical gold and I have, of course, my digital assets. Uh, but the link to this is in the top of the description. Now, check this out. BlackRock and Fidelity uh, spot Bitcoin ETF applications hit a roadblock with SEC citing insufficient details. Bitcoin dropped over 3%. May have dropped more than that. I haven't even looked. But um, these are games, folks, because make no mistake, these people own Gary. So they, so I would say they call Gary and they say, look, make it look good. Make it look like it's a big fight. But Gary is, un make no mistake, Gary's owned by them. Now, we know Max Kaiser uh, worked for Russia today for... Um, quite a while so we don't know if he's owned by them but we know he worked for them um, today he said this as explained the sec runs a protection racket for wall street crooks i agree with that so this is no big surprise it also means xrp will definitely lose their case uh, i think you're wrong on that one as well as everything not bitcoin is untouchable bitcoin is untouchable not on the basis of law, but because Gary's a leg breaker for banking mob. I agree with that. John Deaton corrects him. Max and I certainly agree that the SEC and Gensler have been deployed to protect the incumbent legacy players. As for the rest of Max's comments, it sounds like someone who is smart enough to buy Bitcoin at a dollar. Okay, let me make sure. Every I'm hearing a lot of rumbling. Is everything okay out here? I'm hearing a lot of rumbling. Sounded like my 10 year old was in a fight out there, so I got up to go out there and check it out. Okay, they don't tend to be quiet when I'm doing this show. All right, um, so now we've got this Anthony Scaramucci, who is a Bitcoin maxi, to $400,000 and 1 uh, billion users. What does Bitcoin look like at a billion users? I'm going to be very simplistic. This is a quote from him. Billion users is roughly eight times more than we are right now. Bitcoin, I actually think we're undervalued and technically oversold here. So I would have thought that Bitcoin would be, uh, be where we are in terms of users at 50K. So intrinsic fair value to me would be at 400,000 a coin. I'd like to add, I'd add a billion users because again, 
you have a fixed supply and you've got less than 21 million. You and I both know that the mining finishes in year 2140 and you've also lost coins in the process of adoption. We probably get two to three million coins that have been misplaced. They can be in a landfill. They can be in an old black barrier, somebody's laptop back in 2010. And so as a result, which you probably have about 18 million coins in the universe, there are 48 million millionaires on the planet. 48 million millionaires, I didn't know that, on planet Earth, according to JP Morgan. Well, there's only 18 million Bitcoins in existence. I like those numbers, but what he's not factoring in is there's only 100 billion XRP, and XRP could very well win the case. And if XRP wins the case, why own Bitcoin? That's the question. Um, Gold Telegraph, breaking news, Argentina will allow commercial banks to open customer accounts in Yuan. Things are accelerating. Ooh, ooh. Now, now this is a, Yosan, Yos, Yasin Mubarak makes a very good point. I cannot believe the current domestic administration is giving up on the entire crypto voting block in the U.S. I mean, we're not huge, but it, I'm sure in some states we are big enough to tip the balance of power. I'm either living in a bubble or the Democratic Party is is in for a rude awakening come November 2024. And he's retweeting this where it says, President Biden says he's gonna make tax system fair by eliminating loopholes for Bitcoin and crypto traders, printing trillions and blaming Bitcoin. Well, I'm not a crypto trader. I'm a digital asset investor, which means I hold this stuff for a long time. I don't do a lot of trading type stuff. So does that mean he's, attack he's gonna attack me too? because that doesn't make any sense. I'm someone who saw an opportunity for my family, okay? Why are they attacking? Why are they looking at us as the enemy? I don't get it. But to, to his point, to Yasin Mubarak's point, you know what these people are really acting like? They're acting like people who don't think they have to win an election. That's what they're acting like. They're acting like people who maybe think they know how to rig the election in their favor. <laughs> That's all I'll say on that. <laughs> and I'm not saying that the election was rigged, but I am saying they sure are acting like people who think they can. Now, now we've got this from Tim Draper, and I like Tim Draper, even though he's a Bitcoin maxi, I think he's making a very valid point here. It is playing out. I would argue that we were all pretty much at peace while the internet was booming because that was all about communications and being better, you know, doing business with each other mm -hmm. and building a supply chain throughout the world and everybody was benefiting from that. And that was unprecedented at how much more productive people were during that time and how many people got brought out of poverty during that time. And then Bitcoin came along. The great countries, the great leaders are the ones who have embraced Bitcoin. The weak leaders are the ones who are saying, no, we've got to control things. And all of a sudden they use that as an excuse or whatever to show their true colors, which is I need to control everybody. When you have a control based gov government, they go to war because it's a single person. It's a weak person. It's somebody who gets everybody to do exactly what they want them to do. And those people also want the rest of the world to do what they want to do. And they um, and so they'll attack if they're not doing what they want to do. So I'd argue it's already happening. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be surprised if there were more wars happening. And then when all the wars are done, um, hopefully we'll all sur most of us will survive or, you know, mm -hmm. vast majority will survive that'll be the time when we all kind of hold hands the borders start to drop the businesses start doing doing work across borders again uh, the supply chain reopens up around the world we don't have to say us against them mm -hmm. and we're all better off crypto wars he's right um then we've got this we've got uh the delusional michael sailor talking about um, the, the uh, melt-up for Bitcoin, I say melt-up for XRP. 
people that I'm not the only one that's bought a billion dollars of Bitcoin. I'm the, I'm the only one that's been in a position to announce it. And I've had a lot of reasons to announce it, right? Um, I think that uh, over the next four years, you'll see more. I, I actually think there's a huge amount of money in the crypto ecosystem right now, trading on crypto exchanges, trading in crypto tokens, trading in cryptocurrencies like stable coins. And I think that over time, a lot of that capital will flow into Bitcoin yeah. because, because there's no other place for it to flow. So as people lose faith in crypto exchanges and they lose faith in other crypto networks and they lose faith in other cryptocurrencies, they're not going to go back to the fiat system. They're going, they're going to flow into Bitcoin and the meltdown of crypto will be a melt up yeah. of Bitcoin. And so that'll be an interesting time period. And I, I think that'll be the next wave. It'll be a melt up of Bitcoin and a meltdown of crypto. And then the, the wave after that will be an emergence of, um, of Bitcoin as the highest form of property. You know what keeps that guy up at night? What keeps one eye open is what if Ripple wins? What if Ripple wins? If Ripple wins, look folks, this is something that guys like him and Max Kaiser will not have a discussion about. The thing itself is not a security. The oranges were never a security. That's a fact. The, the, the things on the secondary market have never been declared to be securities, ever. That's a fact. There's no case, there's no case law on that. John Deaton said it a thousand times. The secondary market's not a security. It's just a matter of whether this judge does the right thing. There's a very good chance... And I'm not saying Ripple wins on the whole thing. I think the way it ends is that some of the transactions in the past are, will be called securities. But XRP itself is not one, and XRP in the secondary market is not one. But these guys want it just for Bitcoin. It's so silly because Bitcoin doesn't even work. Proof of work is a joke. And it's not going to change your entire financial system. Proof of work is not going to cut it. It's not going to happen. We really could have used the Winklevoss brothers when we were fighting against the SEC for the last two years. But not only were they not helping, and we were, we were uncovering these videos that they're showing in their little promo video here. For the last two plus years, we were going over all this th stuff, and you didn't hear anything from them. In fact, I heard through the grapevine that they were laughing that Ripple was having to go through an SEC lawsuit. But now they're, they're wanting to promote all of this stuff because it's now it's them get, getting over targeted. seventy percent of the crypto market is Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. Why did I name those four? They're not securities. <laughs> How would you categorize Ether then? I think that the general sweep of what Congress did, not just in the '30s, but as amended. I'm asking you, sitting in your chair it, now, to make an assessment under the laws as exist: is Ether a commodity or a security? So we already know in the U.S. and in many other jurisdictions that three quarters of the market are not ICOs or not what would be called securities. Without speaking to anyone. Is Ether a commodity or a security? In 2018, the Securities and Exchange Commission has said regardless of what it might have been in 14, it's now sufficiently decentralized that we'll consider it not a security. <laughs> It depends on the facts and the law, and if there's a group of individuals... I'm asking about the, the facts middle. and the law sitting in your seat and the judgment you are making. And so, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I think you, you would not want me to prejudge. And again... I think you get the picture. Um, and then we've got this from Stefan Huber. Check this out. This is nuts. <laughs> he said that right. Lubin worked with Swift on the identitrous and early cryptographic payments and trade finance. This is Joseph Lubin right here. In 2000, Identris, I think I'm saying that right, Identris announced a strategic alliance with SWIFT. The introduction of IP standards will, will allow SWIFT members and users to have single interfaces with various infrastructure and services. Um, and then down here it says, as a software engineer and consultant, Lubin worked with E. 
eImagine on the Identris Cryptographic Payments and Trade Finance Network project. Folks, I tell you what, the more that I see, it looks, I'm not saying it happened, but it looks like these people were specifically sent to stop Ripple. I mean, and there's a whole handful of them. Now check this out, Finastra, who is a Ripple partner. is very straightforward. Um, you set up the infrastructure with a technology provider like Finastra, many of the technology providers on the network can almost flip a switch and get the thing turned on. Um, because the connectivity is in place, the messaging is in place on the receive side. Well, these Finastra, I've know, got some news for these Finastra guys. In, so, in crypto social media, you are not allowed to say flip the switch. I don't know what these guys were thinking, but it's Friday, and so I think that we should all give them a free pass. Flip the switch is the crypto police will come out in force. That is one of those phrases that they do not like. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family to be very careful what you say. The crypto police are always watching. Thank you for listening.